Okay, so we are headed up to Primary Children's this morning to go and donate all of these blankets that I bought with Cora the other day for um, in donation of Logan's memory. I'm actually gonna show you guys something in the car. We have to be up there in about 20, or sorry, about 30 minutes. And so I will hurry and show you what we got to go with each blanket in the car. Like this is kind of fun that we can do this again. Like, I don't know. We just, I would love doing stuff like this around his anniversary of his um, death and being able to donate things in, in his memory. So it's a lot of fun and my kids find this really fun as well. And while we're up there at Primary Children's, we'll show you uh, where he was and the whole hospital experience that we had there. We'll kind of show you all that while we're up there. Um, it's a bittersweet day for sure, but I'm excited to be able to do this for families who are going to experience a loss. So I'll talk more about that in the car. Okay, so I just want to show you guys, this is what we have here. So I'm giving with each blanket a picture of Logan and a poem. And I actually posted this poem on my Instagram account. So it just says, our beautiful baby Logan in December passed away. When Christmas comes and lights go on, we think of him each day. We know he's in a better place. We know he lives in light. We know he, he, there's warmth. We feel his love, though he is out of sight. We want to give a blanket in memory of our boy. We hope when wrapped inside it, you'll feel peace and filled with joy. Remember God is also near and he'll wrap you in his love and bless you just as bl uh, he's blessed us with eternal love. So the, um, we are, so with giving each blanket, we've asked, we specifically asked these blankets to be donated to families who are losing a child. And the reason we are asking for that is because um, of our personal experience. And so I want the parents to be able to wrap their baby, like we have a blanket of Logan that we wrapped up and held him in that he passed away in. And so I want um, these parents to have this specific blanket, like the last two hours or three hours or four or whatever, how long their child is alive that day. I want them to have that as the last blanket they held them in. Because even though they don't have it very long, that blanket will become very special to them. And um, that's why I wanted to make it a little bit more personal with a poem because I've been through it and uh, a picture of Logan so they can see who it is that they are getting a blanket from. So it's very, this is a very like emotional day, but I'm also really excited that I can do this for another family and that I can, um, that we were able to donate and do this. And my kids um, get to be a part of it as well, which I think is, is good. Um, we were talking about this morning with Reese and Perry about um, service and kindness and donations and especially this time of year, it just, it just happens to be fitting having it be close to Christmas and his death date is December 29th. It just happens to be very fitting um, and it just works out wonderful and I just feel truly blessed that we are able to donate and, um, and share and remember our Logan during this time. Okay, so we're going through each individual blanket right now and just attaching these. They said that would probably be the best 
to do it this way. So every every blanket so far we've been able to attach his picture and the poem. And I got so emotional over there when I was talking to that lady. <laughs> like, I basically just said, I wanna make sure these these go to um, children who are passing away. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your generosity. Hope you guys have a good Christmas. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. So look, they gave us a picture. They printed one. We just, uh, Corey took them with his phone too, but look, Perry's eyes are, eyes are closed, but look, we have a picture. Just to make sure that we remember today. I think this is very, very cool. Mom, I totally got all teary-eyed handing those blankets because I just know it's gonna mean so much to these families. It just makes me so sad. Okay, so this over here, you guys, was where we would always eat. Like when Dad and I come here, they had the best food, huh, Corey? Yeah. So we would eat all the time right in here, every single day, actually, because we couldn't go home. We'd yeah. eat down here, and they had the best food inside that cafeteria. Anyway, we would always take the stairs up. Yeah. You guys want to sign? Is there Logan on him? No, we can just write about Logan. So Logan Thomas Leroy, and then put his date. His date. Uh, so four one one oh six, and then to twelve twenty nine oh six. Yeah. Oh, oh, Corey and the Royals. <laughs> the doors directly in front of us is where they would wheel the patients out for surgery. Through these doors, we can't walk in there because it's locked down. But um, this is where Logan was. This is the cardiac ICU. So we actually, I remember, Corey, I remember everything right now. I'm getting like flashbacks. A Ronald McDonald house that we stayed in was down that room where that, where it says Ronald McDonald family. That was where we at. This right here was how we could get in to see Logan every time we had a check-in and we had to use that phone over there and we always had to sanitize before we came in. So we used a sanitizer and the headphone and then we call and they we had to give them a code and they'd let us in that way. But I remember standing right here. Corey, do you remember that? Corey, we were right here. Right here against this wall. Specific, I remember standing right here and the doctor was leaning right here and she was telling me that um, Logan, had, Logan had a heart defect. Okay, so and then down this hall that I'm walking down, the cardiac unit is down there, and then down this hall right here is the Ronald McDonald room. And this is where we would come and, well that's not it. Well, yes it is, it's totally redone. Guys, this is so crazy. This doesn't look anything like it, how we had it here. The hospital has changed so much since Logan passed away here that it's hard for me to take you guys on a tour. But anyway, we were able to see some of the things that I remember, but I wasn't able to give you like a tour of the full thing because everything has changed, obviously, in 11 years. But it, um, there is a really sweet feeling when you're here at the hospital, though. I will be honest, like there is a very sweet feeling here and I love being here and especially in memory of Logan like this is so cool to be here and to remember that 11 years ago almost to the day that I was here um, so this is the imaging center and this is where he came to get x-rays and he also had like a heart cath done in that area so this is the angel garden this is outside and Corey and I would always could do we just come walking around here um, just to kind of get some fresh air. We come and sit down and just chat outside. But during the summertime, it was so pretty here. Green and it was just really pretty here. It's a me memorial tree, loving memory of children who are cared for at Primary Children's. Okay, so what did you guys think in the hospital? Um, good. How did you guys feel in there? Sad. How did you feel about donating those blankets? Good. I got all emotional. I got really emotional donating those. I just think it was just like it's super um, sensitive. Yeah, and cute. You're right, Perry. Hashtag cute. Hashtag cute. Okay, you guys, buckle up. We gotta go. It's backing out. Oh. Oh,
do yeah. is adore you all of the time. I'd like to come on, come on, come on, come on. 